Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. We offer these devotions as a way to center ourselves and focus on the divine mystery which we call God. You are welcome to join us, regardless of church membership, your personal belief system, your doubts, or the questions you may have. Our prayer is that we will grow in love of God and love of neighbor through this time together. Now let us center ourselves. Take a deep breath in and let all the worries and stressors of today leave. If only for a moment, breathe in deeply as we now stand on holy ground. Hear the affirmation in our petition. And all of us, with unveiled faces, Seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.18 This is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Philippians 1, 9-11 Anthology reading today as we continue in the third week of Lent with our theme, Living Transformed Life, comes from Flora Slosslin Woolner, Forgiveness, A Passionate Journey Probably our journey of forgiveness will be impossible unless we realize we cannot do it alone. We are not the source of our healing. Truly, the kingdom of God is within us, as Jesus told us, but that kingdom is God's presence. And we need to ask God's help to experience that inner glory. As with any deep healing and release, the empowered mercy of God within and around us is ours to claim. We must face the facts. We are vulnerable, woundable. We have been hurt. We need to name our hurt and our deep needs as clearly and fully as we can. Little can change until we have faced what we actually are. Forgiveness is so instrumental in transformation. I would say things like trust are instrumental in transformation. But for me, it was a moment of trust and forgiveness that led to an openness to personal transformation. And forgiveness is not, again, this one-time event. It is a lifelong devotion. Because it's not easy to forgive and forget. Only God can do that. But we can choose to forgive with God's help and encouragement. With the encouragement of our siblings. Those friends who do love us and encourage us. And as always, forgiveness does not mean continuing to allow yourself to be hurt. Continuing to allow yourself to be in bad situations. It is a personal choice, to heal, to grow, to move beyond what happened to what is. I encourage you to think about forgiveness as part of your transformative experience. How do we live a transformed life? Forgive others. Allow yourself to be forgiven. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew 15, verse 10 through 20. Jesus called the crowd near and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes in the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates a person. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know what the Pharisees were offended by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father didn't plant will be pulled up. Leave the Pharisees alone. There are blind people who are guides to blind people. 
But if a blind person is led by another blind person, they will both fall into a ditch. Peter spoke up. Explain this riddle to us. Jesus said, don't you understand yet? Don't you know that everything that goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates a person in God's sight. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual sin, theft, false testimony, insults. These contaminate a person in God's sight. But eating without washing hands doesn't contaminate in God's sight. God bless the reading of Scripture today. Jesus reminds us and uses the example of, you know, we, we, we use the word Pharisee to talk about a specific group of people, but I really truly believe that Christians in America are the modern day Pharisees. There's a lot of us. Those who hold on to you got to do this, this, and this to get to heaven. Those are Pharisees. Those who, like, we know the answer, we're saved and you're not. Those are Pharisees. Religious folks who think they know better than God, that's a Pharisee. Because there were good Pharisees. There were faithful, devoted Pharisees. One of them practically started the church. His name was Paul. And so the Pharisees that Jesus is calling out are the same religious people today, Christians, that Jesus would call out. You clean your face, you wear nice clothes, you dress up for Sunday, you eat the right food, you say the right things, but the things that come out of your heart, the things you do in secret, things you say in public, the things you tweet, Show that your heart is not fully connected to God. That it's not transformed. That you have a long way to go. So I want you to take time and really think before you speak. Really think before you act. I I really try to encourage my kids to do this because I think it's an important lesson to learn. I have a child who's very spontaneous and doesn't think before he acts. It's important to stop and think. Because if you chase that ball out into the street without looking both ways, you could get hit by a car. It's a small thing. But it's important. And for us, that's also important. Don't run out into the street. Think about what you say and how you're saying it. And if you are encountering other people and you are worked up, angry, emotional, disconnected, discontent, stop yourself. Center yourself. Look inside. Find God there and then speak. Or don't. Good religious people today, right now, not 2,000 years ago, right now, good religious people, Christians, siblings in Christ, spew terrible things, do terrible things, say terrible things. So as we seek transformation, as we seek to become the image of Christ, Let us truly stop, think, and pray before we speak, act, do. As we enter our time of prayer today, friends, I offer you a chance to intercess on behalf of others. Pray for those closest to you, those who lead you to God, those in positions of power, those who are struggling, weak, needing of healing, strength, and pray for yourself. Offer intercessory prayers, prayers for others at this time, knowing that God can work through your prayers and knowing that prayer can move you to action 
So lift up names, lift up situations, lift up our world and its leaders, but also listen so that you may hear how God is calling you to respond to those prayers. We pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I send you forth with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul, but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.